This past Saturday, Oval Invincibles defeated Southern Brave in the Women's 100 final for the second time to claim back-to-back titles. Now, the Oval Invincibles are a juggernaut of their own. Their overseas players have 6,000 T20i runs and almost 400 T20i wickets in between them. Not to mention, the last two editions of WBBL and the 100 winning teams have included at least one of one or more members of the score. Let's talk about Southern Brave. Southern Brave had two of the best batters in the tournament in Mandana and Wyatt, while Lauren Bell, AJ Bellington, and Anya Shrepsel made for a strong bowling unit. But there was a lot of things that were pulling them down throughout the tournament that they actively ignored and ended up hurting them in the end. First, Dunkley and Boucher duo. Braves number three and number five batter were Sophia Dunkley and Maya Boucher. Now they had great luxury to follow an informed duo of Manna and Wyatt, who were striking at 151 and 136 respectively. Now to Dunkley's credit, she did get 193 runs in seven innings in the tournament and ended up as the seventh highest run getter in the tournament. But she was also striking at only 118. This only gets worse in Boucher's case, who could only muster up 88 runs in the tournament at just 108. To put it simply, Dunkley went at just 5.9 runs per set while while also playing the third highest number of deliveries in the tournament, while Boucher could only go at 5.4 runs per set. That's pretty bad. This further puts pressure on the lower order of Georgia Adams, Freya Camp and AJ Wellington who despite the odds did really well, Adams being particularly impressive, striking at her 136 with the bat and also being the joint third highest wicket taker in the tournament with 9. Second. Talia McGrath and her management. Natalia McGrath had a pretty lackluster tournament with just 70 runs with a bat at a strike rate of 93 and just 3 wickets at an average of 39.99. Not to mention she almost gave away 24 runs in the eliminator that Trent Rockets needed to win. But it was hardly McGrath's fault at all. She was drafted in the team way back in April when she was going through a purple patch and got COVID right before the tournament. But the management seemed hell-bent on keeping her in the team despite the fact that it was obvious that she was not at her best. There's also the fact that her purple patch came while playing for Australia. Now Australia has tons of experience in all departments, which allows youngsters like McGrath to play rather freely. This was never going to be the case here, especially with Southern Brave, who although are really strong, are not strong as Australia. There are several cases of performance gap with Aussie players when playing for the franchisee as compared to when playing for Australia. A simple case of this being the current core of Sydney Sixers. There's obviously exceptions to this too, like Beth Mooney, Megan Shoot in this hundred. There's another factor that comes into play and that's how Aussies love to play the faster version of cricket and when it slows down to a certain extent, they're always all at sea, but often rescued by players like Mooney and Haynes. For example, the chase against Bangladesh in this year's World Cup, where Bangladesh had them at 40 for four at one point. Also, their test against India last year where they were always behind due to the fact that they had nothing to speed up the game. Same is the thing with McGrath, who is heavily dependent upon playing the fast game with a bat and making batters commit mistake with the ball. In conclusion, the Brave had a lot going for them, but their ignorance was their undoing against the Oval Invincibles again. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.